What is good? We're back. Going solo in the individual remote recording. We got quite a rainstorm going on in Charleston, about potentially 20 to 30 inches. So if you hear some frogs in the background, the boys are just catching a breather right now. <laughs> coming up for air. Coming up for air. Sure. Uh, might get a little crazy in here. And if it cuts off in the middle, we lost power. Tornado warning uh, south. Southwest of us. Southwest, yeah. Shoot me a text. If, if, if we cut off here, shoot me a text. <laughs> make sure I'm okay. Yeah, so this is what we do for you. We're just, we could be putting ourselves in imminent danger here. No but uh, but today we have the top 25, under 25. This is kind of a cornerstone building around these guys. And we set the under 25 you know, parameters just because you got to set them somewhere. And so this list does not include guys like CeeDee Lamb, Justin Jefferson, Waddle, Devonta Smith, Nico Collins, uh, JT, ET, all those guys are 25. Now, some of this will be semantics because some of these guys will be turning 25 and it's like, but I wanted to let you know that all those guys are fine to still be building around, right? You know, we're not, we're not trying to say don't build around those guys, but we had to set a perimeter somewhere. Exactly. I mean, you know, the first thing I said was when we decided to go actually under 25 and Justin Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb falls off the list, I'm like, well, 25-year-old under that number, it, like you said, it's, it is semantics, but just getting in a knee-deep, down-and-dirty, like, dynasty, cornerstone type stuff, yes, Justin Jefferson's still, like, the biggest cornerstone for me if we're not talking quarterbacks, you know, but, but it's fun to be under 25 because you're really into that prime athletic – you know, area and then like these guys build into their profession here and, and to hone their craft, like obviously Justin Jefferson has done. So let's see what these boys can do. Yeah. So we're, we're, we got basically a consensus. And then if we have some differences, uh, we'll, we'll talk about them. So right off the rip, uh, we got Jamar Chase, Amon Ross St. Brown, Bijan, and Brees Hall, right? Those are just pretty hard to trade for guys at the moment. You know, Amon Ra maybe, has a little wiggle room as we've talked about before. If not, go find that episode. But you know, we're in lockstep that these are the four top tier tier one guys, correct? Yeah. And you know, based on ADP, like most of the time, like a Puka and a Marvin Harrison, um, and now of course maybe neighbors, th those guys will be right there mixed in and a lot of times in front of the Brees Hall and Bijan. But I think the way, you know, when we were talking about it is, you know, Bijan and Brees, Brees and Bijan, they are the foundation pieces in fantasy football right now for running back, yeah. you know, obviously CMC is another level, but he's 27, 28. These guys are brand new young pups and certified studs. Obviously we really haven't seen Bijan be even to Brees' level yet. Um, so I could definitely be talked into taking Brees over Bijan easily, but a lot of people these days are going to take that wide receiver over those guys and I understand but once you go down this list you run out of running backs fast yeah. and that's the you know that's the thing like if you're in a dynasty startup and if it's a one quarterback you know you get one of these stud running backs it's just a weight off your shoulders right passing on a Marvin Harrison or a neighbors or a Puka that's not fun either though you know you yeah. can't go wrong with these guys for sure all right, well, we don't need to spend a ton of time on Tier 1 because I think everybody's in agreement. Those guys are studs. Let's go to Tier 2. I think maybe we have, you know, maybe maybe some people might be uh, upset that Malik Neighbors isn't in Tier 2 for, for at least right now. Um, we got Marvin Harrison leading it off. We got Puka. We got Garrett Wilson. And then we got Jamar Gibbs here in Tier 2, right? Um, Marvin's value is just so incredible right now but i don't think there's anybody that's hotter than neighbors and you know some of that is going to do with the market right now of one guy's in arizona and one guy's in new york hard knocks was there there's just clips everywhere like you know and and neighbors doing work so that's just a different way of maybe those two markets handling uh training camp a little bit getting the buzz going for for danny dimes and and neighbors but didn't have him in here but we can certainly discuss it i think i think marv deserves to be in here he's basically already certified top five wide receiver hadn't done a thing yet and every chart av available puka was <laughs> awesome broke every record last year some may argue that garrett wilson doesn't belong here but i am keeping garrett wilson because i've seen garrett wilson be good with just garbage 
And I feel like if we can get a healthy Aaron Rodgers here, he's going to vault up to a top finish as a top five wide receiver this year. So I have him in there. And then Gibbs easily could be in. Uh, he's as good as Brees and Bijan and can do a lot of the same things. We just know that there's uh, a ceiling and a floor every week that might be a little lower than the amount of touches that those other two guys will see. And that's kind of why I have him down one big co. Yeah, I agree with that with the Gibbs. You know, we talked about with the running back ranking show that we did uh, right this second. Gibbs just cannot keep up with Brees and Bijan in the bell cow usage case, right. especially That's Montgomery. It. Montgomery earns his carries and earns his touchdowns in the in the uh, red zone. Obviously, at the end of the year, after Montgomery had spent some time out being hurt, Gibbs definitely split that red zone usage with him and brought Gibbs's points of floor and ceiling up, obviously. Uh, so that was nice to see out of the end of his rookie season. He did everything you could ask for, which was have that, you know, take off as a, and, and finish strong as a rookie. And you're lucky to have Gibbs on your dynasty team. Malik neighbors is the hotness right now. Right. I mean, he is like, I, that was a fantastic point that you brought up and not, not that I, not, I hadn't even put those two things together. The New York market, the number of clips, I'm sure, you know, that there's clips out there more than the one of Marvin Harrison <laughs> catching that nice touchdown pass, which looked was easily a concussion when he landed on his, you know, when the other player landed on his head, I was like, Ooh, let me take it easy. Barb. I need you, baby. Malik neighbors, man. It, he's the hotness right now. Puka obviously just got hurt out for a couple of weeks, week to week. I agree, man. Garrett Wilson. I, I definitely wasn't as a high on him before, you know, when he come out as a rookie and stuff, it, he should have been, obviously he's a stud with garbage quarterback play. He's been, Nothing but very, very solid with uncatchable targets. And there's a lot being made and cuts being, made, you know, clips coming around about his uh, just being wide open and, and creating massive separation and immediate right. and, and medium to deep targets that the ball couldn't get there. And like you said, if Aaron Rodgers is putting that on the money, uh, his points per game is just going to skyrocket. Yeah. Uh, I, it's, it, I just have. Right this minute, man, it's very, very hard to talk about these guys. Just based on value, the way I did my rankings and stuff, it's very hard to have this without Blake Neighbors right there beside these guys. Yeah, I mean, we can. you could certainly bump Neighbors up into there. For, what, for me, what's keeping him out is just that I just – and maybe it's not – maybe it's not the way to do it, but like I just have him and Rome kind of the same. So if I'm moving up Neighbors, I got to move up Rome, but Rome is going to be a bit more of a, a, of a longer-term – play still going to be good but not going to be where the volume is for neighbors so maybe not being as stubborn and maybe moving neighbors up into that tier is is what we need to do right now how do you I feel agree about with that? that we have to be you know we we'll try to be quick on this for this little spot right here but that's exactly right that's a really good you know talking point teaching point if you will like right this second you with the target competition that uh, rome has he cannot match neighbors he will not match neighbors outside of some mm -hmm. serious injuries on his offensive, de you know, wide receiver depth chart but with his fellow man in there with DJ Moore, obviously being a target hog and, and the biggest target hog we've had in the NFL consistently in a long time for a long time and Keenan Allen coming in there to join. So Rome cannot get the volume that neighbors is going to get. Is Rome going to look good at times and have fantastic numbers? Absolutely. Is he a better quarterback situation? Most likely. But neighbors, if he goes out there and has 150 freaking targets this year, mm -hmm. look out. So, you yeah. know, I think right now, short term, I think you got to play that value game right this minute. And if I know neighbor, I know Rome is your boy, but right this second, you got to react with the market and you got to value neighbors up there. Yeah. I mean, I'm, and I'm, look for a good buying opportunity for the short term play for, for Rome. You know, if right, somebody, right. You, that's what you do. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, and also our 2024 Rookie Draft Kit, complete with rookie rankings, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. All right, well, maybe we'll move Rome up into tier two or uh, sorry, Malik neighbors up into tier two. And then tier three um, would be how we had it coming in was Rome neighbors, Drake London and Chris Olave bringing up the rear there. But maybe we're going to shoot Malik neighbors up into tier two here. And then tier three would just be Adunze, Drake and Olave. And then, you know, begs the question of, hey, you know, when we're doing this, we're 
talking tight end premium 1.5 right and i should have led with that that's my bad bad host yep. we we left the quarterbacks Thanks. out because we just felt like we would dilute it down we wanted to do just skills uh here you know so obviously the the three tight ends i think at the top of everybody's list is is mcbride kincaid and laporta and in 1.5 i mean kincaid and and laporta or kincaid and, and mcbride are going to put up wide receiver one numbers with, with the amount of volume that they get that's that's what you that's what you um aspire and shoot for for those tight ends and and there comes a point in the draft in like the fourth round where i'm taking those guys over a lot of guys because i know that they can give me a wide receiver one season from the position and i'll even if i get two of them then i'll flex one right i'm not Absolutely. scared to flex two tight ends so it begs the question of is is chris olave i think drake one needs to be up here because of the opportunity and how good he can be Chris Olave, just everything is really improving around Drake London, and some of the stuff is already baked into there, and we know uh, kind of, I think we know what the ceiling of Drake can be. Um, and we know what the ceiling of Chris Olave has been, and he's been very consistent, but like we do get a new OC, so the stale offense changes for New yeah. Orleans, right? We get a new yeah. OC, we're going to get a whole lot more motion. Olave is one of the best motion players in the league there's a bunch of stats. Uh, maybe I can find you, get Jason to flash it up on the screen here. But he was in the companies of, of people like Tyreek Hill in plays with pre-snap motion, Chris Olave, and, and uh, yards per route run or targets per route run or something, yards per route run, I believe. So with we know he can do it. Size because they never did it. Right. Right now it's Rome, and Rome's going to stay there. Um, I think Drake stays here for me. Is there any movement for the tight ends at all here for you? Or I, I, I have him in the tier below. And then Olave here because of of kind of what can be. And to be fair, like what he has been already, he's been thousand yards each year. It hasn't been he hasn't approached superstar level, but it's it's probably the situation more than him holding him back. I said it when they drafted Olave, he kind of got double draft capital, right? That's a couple of years ago now. But when they drafted him early in the first round, they traded up to do it. And they gave a first round pick the next year, I believe, to get in that spot to do it. So uh, the Saints were all, all in on, on Olave and he came in and performed. And I believe I feel, I feel like we're a little bit tired of him already mm -hmm. you know he doesn't get the the Garrett Wilson bump because he's had enough quarterback play and he scored enough points to not leave us thinking what if because he's kind of mm -hmm. done it already but he hasn't been like you know that breakout puka kind of guy so we, we're kind of tired of Chris Olave and we're and that shouldn't be but he's high enough on this list to show you where he is but I, this is the way you have to look at it if you're in a draft and let's say you're in the middle of the round and you and you haven't really done any trades if you're not a big trader you're in the middle of the round so that thing's got to go five or six more picks this way and it's got to go five or six more picks to get back to you and you can look at it and say hey there's four or five tight ends I like and you're you know Drake just fell off the board so I'm gonna take Chris Olave and then a tight end run goes and then you miss three or four of those tight ends and you're like, man, I really would much rather have one of those tight ends than Chris Olave because I can make that wide receiver spot up. You may already have one or two of them already. You know, mm -hmm. you may have a good running back. You may have a good wide receiver and my, Olave could have been your wide receiver two or wide receiver three, depending on how your roster construction is being put together already. But the way I look at it is once the season starts, man, like you're not trading away. You're not giving away a lave and getting back Trey McBride, Dalton Kincaid, Sam Laporta. It's not happening, especially in tight end premium. And like you said, in Friday, depends tight end how the premium, season starts, but <laughs> do what now? It said it depends on the season starts. If the saints offense looks good, then, then it might be close. Well, I mean, well, you, I, you could, I said season starts as soon as the draft's over, as soon as the pick is made, like if somebody puts, you know, if you, if you, when you stamp your spot and you take Trey McBride, if I take Trey McBride in the startup and Chris Olave is still on the board and you're like, Hey man, you want to take Chris Olave? I'm like, no, I just, I could have taken Chris Olave, but I took Trey McBride, mm -hmm. you know? And so I, I'm taking Trey McBride, Dalton Kincaid and Sam Laporta over Chris Olave in a startup right now, tight end premium, take nothing away from Chris Olave. I'm not trying to do that. And I think he, I hope he think he can be out there and, taking it to another level this year. Um, and then you go, you know, you have the, uh, the, the new rookie quarterback from the game Cox, whose name is slipping my mind right now for some reason. Rattler. Um, then you got Rattler in there who backs it. That gives you just another potential playmaker behind car or maybe a better playmaker. So that gives you a little bit more of a, a, a bottom to the offense, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of raises the floor. If car goes out, you don't have to take passes from Taysom Hill. Right. Yeah. So that's nice. So I think that we can see, Chris Olave being just fine, but I would definitely take all three of those tight ends over Olave. All right. The only thing with Olave, Derek Carr doesn't really bother me. We've seen him put up some numbers with Derek Carr. 
what bothers me is the is the head coach and i guess you could say the same thing for uh garrett wilson because you know i don't i don't think sal is a bad coach i think he's a great dc and their defense is going to be good and that's his that's his job basically you know that's what he did dennis allen just seems like he's got to go i don't understand how he's still the guy over there doesn't make any sense to me Um, very surprised that kind of of bothers me a little bit with chris olave and he he just bothers me a little bit and at least they've brought in kind of the the new flavor and wave of of what's been good in the league as an offense for somebody from the shanahan kind of disciple a a a kubiak right absolutely Um, style and scheme just bringing in a complete difference right i first look agreed man i don't know why the coach didn't change the head coach didn't flip but maybe they couldn't get the head coach that they wanted yeah and they decided well what we really want is the offensive coach anyway so let's go get this guy kubiak over here and and bring him in and like you said, just try to be our best to mimic the Niners and the Rams and the Texans and the Packers. So that's, that's all the, it's a, it's a copycat league and it's, it's filtering down, you know, it was for every, everybody wanted to have an Andy Reed offense 10 years ago. And not that you still don't want to have an Andy Reed offense, <laughs> yeah. but you know, now everybody wants to have a, a Kyle Shanahan and McVay of a LaFleur offense, a Slowick offense and, and, maybe even a Dave Canales offense, mm. you know, so let's mm-hmm. see, let's see what these saints can do. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to leave tier three like that. And then I'm going to take tier four and put it in there. And if, if we need to split up the rankings here, we certainly can, but I'm going to go tier four McBride Kincaid Laporta. And, and we can kind of say Olave is a, you know, you could, you could go either way on that one. So, and we, we the reason that we have the tight ends there is very simple for me. And, and you kind of stated a little bit, I stated a little bit, but like, Trey McBride through week eight or whatever, he was a, he was a wide receiver one. Kincaid can put up wide receiver one numbers in tight end premium, uh, one point five. And Laporta is is you know the number two, number three tight end all. So the value is good, the offense is good, um, and he put up great numbers as a rookie. I don't know if the volume is going to be as strong as those other two guys, Kincaid and, and McBride, and it, and in premium, I probably prefer both of those guys over Laporta. But it's it's you know we're splitting hairs a little bit, but I. I'm going to take a gamble on the val- on the volume on those two guys, but I want all three of them. Well, you said gamble, you know, so I would take McBride first and some people might not, you know, Same. agree with that. That's fine. We had a big McBride discussion on another uh, podcast, but uh, the gamble is Kincaid over Laporta for me. Laporta's safer. If you're playing half PPR, it's Laporta all day. If you're playing PPR, mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. flip a coin, and if you're playing half, you're playing premium. You get another fifty percent of points value for every catch. Then you probably could be looking at Kincaid. But if mm-hmm. the red zone doesn't work out for Kincaid, we know the red zone is there all day for Sam yeah. Laporta. So Laporta is much safer. You're yeah. taking a gamble on the Kincaid's t- uh, catch volume that could easily could be potentially 25, 30 more catches than Laporta and Laporta already crushed it with touchdowns. And if we, and we, I kind of expect it to stay around there, but if it did drop off, you know, it's the up and down stat. So if it's, if he goes down to five touchdowns this year and Laporta catches a hundred balls and tight end premium it's probably not going to be close, you know, so Kincaid's going to be much better than to Laporta. Uh, right. But you can't go wrong with any three of those guys. Yeah. All right, well, let's uh, let's keep it moving there. Uh, let's go tier five here. So I think this is where we maybe have our biggest difference, and I think we're in lockstep for the most part. You, you got Olave maybe as more of a tweener and, and over those other guys, so you could switch yours up a little bit right there. And then uh, for the Kyron tier five, I got Kyron, Achan, Pitts, and Brock Bauer. So there's the other two young tight ends. Obviously, Brock hadn't done anything yet, but I think the value is very insulated, and I think Kyle Pitts – you know, hey, you could say you're an idiot for keeping Kyle Pitts in here, but I think Kyle Pitts is still younger than Dalton Kincaid, uh, right. Sam Laporta, you know, and Brock Bowers, I believe. So maybe maybe not quite younger than Brock Bowers, but he was very young coming in, and we've seen some production from him, much like Garrett Wilson. The quarterback play was bad. Also, Pitts was a little banged up, uh, probably more so than than you know anybody really knew and led on and, and i think we're about to just see same thing with drake i think we're about to just see this whole thing kind of flip on its head and see how good both of those guys are so i have pits in there but you have a little bit of an expanded tier here yeah you know you you let off with kyron and you do you do often say that inside your tier you're not ranked kyron to me is represents the rams backfield obviously you you like him a little bit more as an actual running back than i do but i do respect what he did last year. And I do, I'm very pro Rams offense. I'm very pro Rams running game. 
Uh, so I, I kind of weigh him and and obviously the situation together there. It's probably not fair to then change that subject and go straight to A-Chan because it's kind of <laughs> the same thing, you know, but like A-Chan just physically, obviously more gifted, physically gifted. Maybe his vision is not as good as Kyron. He may, Kyron might be in the uh, Dalvin Cook tier of vision and reflexes. <laughs> athletically more gifted for sure no doubt there's not even a question you know yeah. so um you know that physical talent and scheme together and, like right. I, the, the, a, both both guys are married to what they i think per, good fits right they're gr- exactly you we, we just saw the unreal ceiling of a chan last year and he's supposedly been working on more routes supposedly been working on his hands mm-hmm. and the coming, he was he got hurt in preseason, and so he was kind. You know, so yeah. if we can if we can come in here and have a uh, a tick up for H and I know that Kyron was t- second, and he was, you know, the only person that was close to CMC in points per game is yeah. Brees Hall at the end of the season stuff. You know, so I I think H and as a dynasty asset is a safer pick than Kyron Williams. Um, so I got him at the top of that tier. Pitts and Bowers, just like you said, I don't need anything to add. There's two young still, still Pitts, you know, Bowers is a rookie, but I still like where he's at. Um, even if he's on the Raiders and then uh, Pitts is just as young as all those rookie Rodgers tight ends still. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, the biggest change I got from you there, other than flipping, you know, Kyron to the bottom of the tier to me and H.A. to the front is just adding uh, Tank Dale and Jonathan Brooks. Okay. Um, so why why do you feel so strongly about that? Because I got I got Tank Dell in the next one, and I don't have I don't have Jonathan Brooks on this list on the top twenty five, but uh, you know, right outside of it. Uh, so you know why you you've been a big a big Tank Dell. I mean, I got you on the Tank Dell train, but I, now now you you're, sure did. Now I'm you're driving on, it. Now you're driving it now, and and uh, I'm you know I'm not I'm in the I'm in the next car back. I'm not I'm not. You know, maybe I'm <laughs> shoveling the coal in there. I like you know, it. I'm yeah, not yeah, driving yeah. it. Uh, you can still hear me. You know, yeah. we're still in the same car. You, you know, it's, we're still close enough. If you got yeah. the windows cracked, uh, you can hear me from do it being the conductor in the front of the tank deal line. So every chance I've gotten this off season has been the comparison to Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey's friendship, like Tank Dale and j- just Stroud are, are tied at the hip, bro, tied at the hip, and so it's just like I. That's who I want on my team. I want Tank Dale on my dynasty team because he's with he's with Stroud, and they, they are boys. And that's that's as far as I need to go with that. Mm-hmm. Let me jump over to the Jonathan Brooks. Well, real um, quick, I mean, to to put the cherry on top of that, we did see Tank Dale being able to you know put up seventeen point eight points per game uh, when healthy and out there, even with Nico Collins out there. So, like, it's it's there's a real possibility that you, everyone's going to see a dip you know, as far as solid production across the board, but because I think you, you obviously had digs into there and he's going to be a factor, but you're still going to see those good games. There'll still be a good baseline, I think for tank, because, you know, like you said, uh, you know, as silly as it is, it's CJ Stroud's boy. That's who he wanted. That's who he took. He, 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 he shouts him out at every opportunity that he can. He loves him. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm kind of fine with that. I was keeping it a little sim- more simple than that, but I, I, I can't hate on it. Um, so yeah, Jonathan just, Brooks. Well, and and for the Texans offense, you bring in Diggs, right? But you also the pie gets bigger. There's going to be more passing. They did they wait they didn't open the offense up until the second half of the season last year for a rookie quarterback in a really bad injured offensive line. And so uh, you you bring in a second year quarterback who takes a, a bigger leap. You get a bigger pie. C.J. Stroud is going to be throwing more. There are going to be more, you know, there's going to be the the distribution of targets is going to be a little bit different this year, but there's going to be more catch, more catches. There's going to be more completed passes and there's going to be more first down passes. There's going to be a lot. There was a lot of first down rushes last year. And so I just think that tank Dale's going to be more than fine. And as far as a dynasty asset, he's just feels safe on my team and, and I'll deal with a little bit of fluctuation as they figure out how Diggs plays in. But I, I, Tank Dell is just so safe to me. And that's, that's, it's a fun pick, man. It's a fun yeah. pick. It's a part of the Stroud and the heart part. If, if Stroud goes nuclear, Tank Dell's right there with him. So yeah. that's, that's kind of, it's a part of the, it's a cheaper part of the office, cheap ish part of the office. Not as cheap as Diggs, but Diggs is 30 and right. Tank Dell's not. Uh, Jonathan Brooks, to be quite honest with you, this is basically, you could just write in Dave Canales running back. 
<laughs> right? So you can tell me why Jonathan Brooks is a really, really good player, and I can tell you why the situation is where he's how he makes it on this list. Because whoa, whoa, let me whoa, give whoa, you whoa. the I'm, I'm 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 the conductor of the Canalis train. So let's whoa uh, whoa 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 whoa. <laughs> at least there's got to be two seats up there at the front of the bus. <laughs> All right. So let me just let me just Bijan Robinson, Brees Hall. That's two. Jib Gibbs is three. A Chan and Kyron Williams. That makes five. That's why Jonathan Brooks is up here because mm. we're getting down here and we're getting down here to the nitty gritty. And we've talked about five running backs. And if we if and and if we're not what you know what are we doing here with uh, obviously CMC is missing from this list. You know Jonathan right. Taylor's missing from this list. Et he's missing from this list. Jacobs uh, Saquon. And then Jacobs and Saquon. Those are all the top running backs that are missing off the list. (laughs) Yeah, but I don't. I mean, as a dynasty asset, I'm not. not, I'm not 99 sure I want Jacobs and Saquon over uh, Jonathan Brooks for price cost. I mean, I'd Mm. rather take Jonathan Brooks a round and a half later. You know, just for my, I'd rather take a wide receiver there. Maybe in the startup, maybe in a may already made league, I might be you know wanting a Jacobs just because to 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 know what I can get here for for the next two or three years in in a situation. But in a startup, I think for sure. Yeah, I so, you know, I mean, I'm not. I wouldn't. You would. You don't have to. You don't have to draft Brooks over Jacobs. Right. Maybe over Jacobs, but definitely not over over Barkley in a in a dynasty league right now. Um, and you and you shouldn't. You should draft a wide receiver or a tight end, and then get Brooks the next round or trade back and pick up something nice. You know. Yeah. Um, and in, in that cost, so, you got you got Barkley at four twelve, and you got um, Jacobs at six two, and then we have Brooks at six eight. Exactly. So for six eight from four twelve down to six eight twenty eight year old Barkley and Brown down to a twenty one year old uh, Dave Canales hand pick special. It's mm. just, you know, to me, it's not even close for dynasty asset. And that's not to take anything away from what Barkley could do with the Eagles. Now week three, when Barkley's averaging twenty points a game, people are going to can cite this you know video right here and throw it in my face. It's not what I'm talking about. I'm right. talking about the fact that we got you know five running backs on, that we've that we've talked about here down to the 20 we're at the 21st player and and Jonathan Brooks is only the fifth running back we're talking about right. under 25 you know so that's yeah. it's Dave Canales it's a situation it's PPR monster it's it's, it's a better the state of the back. running back right you know it's the state of the running back but he's a better running back than Rashad White most likely when he touches the field he's a more gifted runner potentially you know Rashad Wright and what White is like yards above expectation metric that I can hear. He's like actually negative point something. He was like literally one of the dead last running backs and yards above expected yards gained or something like yeah. that. However, that's that stat works. Obviously Rashad white crushes it with catches. That's Dave. And Dave Canales has already told you what he wants out of Jonathan Brooks and why he got Jonathan Brooks. So mm-hmm. that's Jonathan. That's that's Canales and, and Jonathan Brooks combination platter in that spot right there in that tier for me, because they're just hard to find foundational running backs. Yeah. Young foundational running backs. that's going to score points every week consistently. Yeah. Fair enough. All right, let's keep it moving. Let's get to the last tier. And I think we're, you got Brooks in there. So you're going to be two over. I think I'm one over on this next tier. So, and I can throw a book Brooks in the next tier without any problem at all. The next tier, tier six, finishing this up. Top 25, under 25. I got Kenny Walker, so I'm going to throw him in the discussion for running backs because he's 23, and I think he's awesome. I got Tank Dell, Zay Flowers, JSN, George Pickens, Jordan Addison, and Rashi Rice in this next tier. Obviously, I don't have any rookies in here. I think Brooks is the one that I would easily add to this tier, but I don't for the video purpose, I don't need him to be displayed there if Jason doesn't have enough room. Um, but just know that I feel similar to the way Big Co does, just – I would I'd probably throw him down down here one more and I'm I'm gonna give Kenny Kenny with three sticks the uh the respect here. I think I think he's really good. I think the situation has really improved for what Kenny Walker does and the explosion and the the different things that Kenny can offer to an offense. Yeah, you're gonna have to deal with some that some downs where he's doing too much. You know, that's part of his running style. He can hit a home run from anywhere. He can catch, I think, better than a lot of people will give him credit for. And the best part about him is you can get Sharbs in the 11th round. And now I got both pieces of this thing. But early word out of the Seahawks camp is they love him. The OC and the running back coach are like, hey, we need to ride this guy. We need to give this guy a, good, a bunch of touches because what good things are going to happen. And they're going to be more spread out. They're going to be in 11. So when you can spread that field out and give Kenny Walker more space to operate in, 
uh, instead of being kind of knowing what we're doing and a, a long line of what the Seahawks analytically have done on these downs and in and out. And, you know, now you have a whole different ball game. You got Ryan Grubb out there who is was excellent and he was already a very pro style off. Washington was probably running one of the most pro ready offenses in the league. Um, and, you know, Dylan Johnson was the engine that made that 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 team run. And Kenny Walker is when, when Dylan Johnson was on Washington was really obviously they had monsters everywhere. But when Dylan sure. Johnson's on the engine is, you know, that is really hard to stop. And I think Kenny Walker could be that engine for them and offers so much more explosion um, and playmaking ability than than Dylan Johnson. And I like Dylan Johnson. Um, and I think Sharps is good, too. But I think Kenny's I think talent's going to win out in this situation. And Kenny's going to be a great buy right here flowers if you've heard me talk about it love flowers love the opportunity and and the fact that things can't grow and get better in year two under munkin is is something that i feel like gets lost a lot in fantasy perspective Mm -hmm. we just talked about it in the last show like things Mm -hmm. nobody can grow and improve like the stat sheet that they put in they're measured up against everybody in in that year of production of their rookie year or whatever and they put them up against everybody else and like this is what he did historically so this is his range of outcomes and it's like that's just to me that's a silly way to look at it Things like can that. change. Opportunities can grow. Relationships can grow. Offenses can change. Um, and I think Zay Flowers is going to be a big part of that. You talked about Tank Dell. I love it. JSN, I'm still very much into. Again, we just talked about the Seahawks. Um, I'm buying as much JSN as I can. I still think he's a great receiver. Patience is nothing. You know, Patience is a virtue and can really pay off in this dynasty game. It can bite you a little bit here and there. But more than likely, if you can have some patience and, and be ready and know what you're doing – and have a good plan and, and a researched take guys like JSN will end up paying off. I got Pickens on here. I think he's, you know, he could easily be up in tier five, tier four, tier three, even by the end of this coming year, he's just got that superstar quality. He's just George mm-hmm. Pickens, it, whether, and the offense is going to be a little, eh, he might get doubled up. He could get frustrated because maybe the Steelers aren't great. They're going to run it a lot, but George Pickens is really interesting. And then Rashi Rice, I think, is the, one of the best. Him and JSN might be the two best buys. So that's kind of my tier six. Big Co, take us home. I like that. I, yeah, the Kenny Walker stuff, I agree with that. And then he does have the protection of a DK Metcalf that could take the top off. So it's not like, if you know, when they go to spread out, you're talking about Dylan Johnson having all those studs out there on Washington. They had monsters everywhere. So you got JSN and DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett to protect, you know, uh, Kenny Walker from the defense there. And they have to respect everything. So I like the Kenny Walker stuff as a dynasty asset. He could be a boom bust prospect this year for value going up and down if that if that if he does a couple things and makes the new regime upset maybe they turn to sharps a little bit more but he's an absolute beast um and i completely agree with that it's a good list of a good list of receivers obviously the jordan addison stuff with the news right now like that people aren't going to like the jordan addison part of this list he's a he's a absolutely really really good football player Mm -hmm. um he probably doesn't have the top end uh, upside of a JSN potentially. Um, I don't think he has the t- ability to be what George Pickens can be physically, but he's a really, really good. He could be like one of the best wide receiver twos on his team in the league. Devonta Smith. Um, right, right. So I, I, I like Jordan Addison as a dynasty player right now. Like I like him as a dynasty asset, and I like the fact that his as we get closer to the season and I think his value is going to keep going down Mm -hmm. and his price is going to keep going down. And pretty soon he could be a throw in and a trade to make a trade go down. And so you just stack a good young wide receiver on your team and take advantage and, and ride out a little bit of a wave here, um, a negative wave and, and wait until it's going the way back up because Jordan's at us. All he did was be awesome last year. And now they they can hold it against him. Um, Yeah. Rasheed Rice is a great dynasty buy. So I, everything you said, I don't have much to add to it. You crushed it. Let's roll. Yeah, I mean, we'll go back to Addison real quick and we'll wrap up. And then, you know, I don't have any rookies in this tier at all. I could easily take Addison out and throw Jordan, uh, Jonathan Brooks in there. Like you said, I would tack him onto the end, end of this without any problems. I love Worthy. I love Lad. And I like Brian Thomas. I've just seen Jordan Addison do it and do it well. Um, and now some people will quote that he was the most inefficient and yada, yada. But like, he came out here and put up 900 yards and a bunch of touchdowns or, or 800 yards and a bunch of touchdowns, whatever it was uh, in year one with Justin Jefferson going down in a pretty turmoil situation over there for the Vikings. Um, so I, I'm not going to discredit Jordan Addison. They're switching quarterbacks over. So maybe it even is a little slower season for Jordan Addison this year um, with, with Sam and, and maybe JJ playing a little bit. But I'm not I'm not ready to just be like, oh, you know, that was a. 
he's going to regress and he was terrible. And, and you're looking, I, I watched him play and the play on the field was, was pretty solid for, for a rookie and, and coming in the whole time. Like, this is the thing you knew that he was a Robin. He's not a Batman. Right. And he doesn't need to be. He went into a situation he a, where he, he like, was just an like awesome. Robin. And you said it in a different way, but like we said that the whole draft process. So you just need to know what that was. It's, that's on you if you thought he was going to come in and be this stud, absolute, just game breaking number one. That ain't that ain't what Jordan Addison is going to be on this level. But we saw yeah, what, the funny how good two he, he could be. What's that? He put up he put up Batman numbers though, and people are still saying, "Well, he did it because Justin Jefferson got hurt." Well, isn't that what what can, what more can you ask out of a rookie yeah. when the best wide receiver in the game gets hurt? Right. What, what can you? Oh, so he did. He played good. Is this yeah. bad? You yeah. know. And oh well, everything he did was with Kirk. The biggest games he had was with Kirk Cousins. Yeah. No okay. Shit. <laughs> yeah. He had a good quarterback. Yeah. So yeah, don't 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 let. Jordan Addison get by you as he slowly loses dynasty value, take advantage. But yet the three rookies, the four or five, all the rookies, like all the rookies, any of those rookies, especially the three you mentioned could easily be up and down this list. Mm -hmm. Just hadn't seen him play had picked number 25. All these guys, a couple of them had really good. Brian Thomas could be easily right in the middle of this list in Mm -hmm. week two of the season. He sure. goes out and roasts a couple, you know, five catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. He's right in the middle of this list as a yeah. dynasty asset. McConkey yeah. goes out and catches eight for 80. There it is. And we know what the pictures and videos have been of worthy. Give me worthy five catches for 80 yards and two touchdowns. You cannot buy him. Right. So right. that's, you know, yeah. And, and if you look at my overall rankings, the, the rookies are kind of all right below these guys. So it's right on par with kind of where I'm at with my overall rankings uh, with, with the position, um, I love all those guys, but you know, I, I, I like these guys that I've seen operate at a high level in the league. And JSN's maybe one that you can't say he did, but I he did operate at a pretty decent level once things were rolling a little later. And we've seen um, you know, the numbers of of how good he was when he was outside. Uh there's a great Dude, he fantasy. Played, he played games with a broken hand and a cast. Yeah, yeah it was as a, a receiver. Yeah, you know, you hold you use your hands to catch a ball and he right, had a cast right. on. Yeah. But and the, the conversation that we just had about these wide receivers is exactly why Jonathan Brooks is up the list for me because mm. of the choices at wide receiver for as dynasty assets. As like we it. move down this list, the choices for running back as long-term dynasty assets are slim pickings after this, as we go down this list. So the, the wide yeah. receivers keep stacking up. There's wide receiver after wide receiver. You can build your team out, go ahead and grab. If you haven't, if you didn't get one of those first four running backs, Keep a lookout for Jonathan Brooks. Don't let and, yeah. and you know tr- potentially Trey Benson as well. But yeah, we know Jonathan Brooks is in a situation that's going to feed him. Well, and the way that Brooks's value got real steamed up real fast it, it speaks to kind of what you're saying, right? You know, yeah. Brooks w- was one of the fastest, biggest movers from draft day to now, and people mm-hmm. are all over it and love it. So I, I, th- I think. It took one point. press conference for Dave Canales to remind you how he does yeah. this. You know, he told you about what was going to happen last year, and we didn't believe him. He right. said that Rashad White was going to get the ball early and often and continuously, even if it's not working. Right. And that's exactly what happened. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's get out of here. I'm Casey. That's Big Co. Come check us out on the uh, Patreon side of things. You get extra episodes, uh, at least three a month. Uh, Five-star reviews would be lovely. A subscription would be lovely. Or just a nice little comment below. Tell us what you like, what you didn't like, where we're idiots. Tell us the efficiency stats of Jordan Addison that somebody else told you why he stinks. Hit us with those. That's fine. That's all. It's all. That's what it's about, baby. It's different opinions. So hit us Hit us up in the comments of, of what you like, what you didn't like. Uh, like I said, there's a $5 holler on the Discord. You get access to that. You got We got ADP. We got rankings. We got all sorts of stuff over there. For your pleasure, we're doing drafts. Um, the discords there. There's also a free discord. Uh, so lots of good stuff going on. If you want a little extra content from your boys, come check us out. If you've been listening for a while, least you could do is a five-star review on the pod or, or a subscription and a comment. Um, or if you're feeling frisky, try your boys five bucks or go get a tea, go get a tea, support your boys, go get a tea. Two, two more tea. seconds, two more seconds. We got some, we got some settings changes coming in the future to the discord and to the Patreon and, mm. and some of the guys that the, 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 we're loyal guys. So the people that are in there already, when these things come out are grandfathered in. So if you just <laughs> need that little, 
if you need that little kick in the butt to get on the on the Discord and into the Patreon for five bucks a month, uh, just go ahead and grab that MasterCard out real quick and type it in. That's the hardest part. Just taking the time to do it. Type it in. You know, five bucks a month. Let's roll and you get grandfathered into the new stuff we got coming out. <laughs> pitch, pitch, pitch. All right, we're out of here. Appreciate you. Peace. Fastball. <laughs>